Welcome to Current Report, your trusted source for breaking headlines, global insights, and sharp analysis from around the world. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an update. On October 9th, 2010, Earth made a move that would reverberate across continents. It expanded its export controls on rare earth elements, tightening its grip on resources the world depends on. The announcement sent shockwaves through the global economy, triggering immediate volatility in financial markets and sowing uncertainty among investors and business leaders worldwide. Five new elements, holmium, erbium, thulium, europium, and ytterbium, were added to the restricted list, bringing the total to 12. These elements are essential for everything from lasers and fiber optics to electric vehicles and advanced defense systems. The new controls go far beyond just raw materials. They now target the sophisticated technologies and specialized equipment used to process these minerals, signaling China's intent to dominate not just extraction, but the entire production ecosystem from start to finish. For high-tech industries, especially semiconductors, green energy, and advanced electronics, this was a chilling message. Access to critical materials would now be subject to Beijing's approval, threatening the very foundation of global innovation. The timing was no accident. The move came just before a high-stakes US-China summit and as a fragile trade truce neared expiration, adding a new layer of tension to already complex negotiations. Stock prices of Chinese rare earth producers soared overnight, while Western companies scrambled to assess their exposure and rushed to secure alternative supplies, fearing a prolonged squeeze. The era of open access to critical minerals ended overnight, replaced by a new reality of uncertainty and restricted flows. Industries built on just-in-time manufacturing and sprawling global supply chains now faced a nightmare scenario. Sudden shortages, production delays, and the threat of cascading disruptions. Even before these sweeping controls, earlier restrictions had already forced shutdowns in European automotive plants, highlighting the vulnerability of entire sectors. With the new, broader rules, the potential for disruption is exponentially greater, threatening to paralyze industries far beyond the tech sector. The world is about to learn just how fragile its interconnected systems really are, as the ripple effects of scarcity spread from factories to consumers. The question is no longer if the supply chain will break, but when and how badly. The new era of scarcity has begun, and its consequences will be felt everywhere. Rare earth elements, 17 in total, aren't actually rare, but are rarely found in concentrations that make mining viable. They're the invisible ingredients powering our modern lives, from smartphone screens to electric car motors. Think of them as industrial vitamins, tiny amounts but essential for everything to work. Neodymium and dysprosium create the world's strongest magnets, vital for everything from phone motors to wind turbines. Europium and terbium give color to LED screens. Their unique magnetic, luminescent and catalytic properties can't be easily replicated. In semiconductors, rare earths like cerium polish silicon wafers, erbium amplifies light in fiber optic cables. Disrupting their supply isn't a minor inconvenience, it's a fundamental threat. Substituting these elements is nearly impossible and takes years of research. The world built its technology on the assumption these elements would always be available. That assumption has now collapsed. China's dominance in rare earths is no accident. It's the result of decades of strategic investment. While other nations closed mines over costs and environmental concerns, China ramped up production and processing. Today, China produces nearly 80% of the world's rare earths and controls over 90% of refining capacity. For heavy rare earths like dysprosium and terbium, China's monopoly is nearly total. Even foreign mined ore is usually sent to China for processing. The new restrictions go beyond quotas, introducing a case-by-case -case licensing system that rewards allies and punishes rivals. Now, even foreign companies using Chinese origin rare earths or equipment must get a Chinese export license. This extends Beijing's control far beyond its borders, turning supply chains into instruments of state power. The world is now subject to China's economic decisions, regardless of geography. The Netherlands, home to ASML and the world's most advanced chip-making tools, is at the heart of this crisis. 
These lithography machines rely on rare earths for their lenses, lasers, and wafer polishing. A shortage of any one material could halt production, creating a global bottleneck. Dutch firms, built on just-in-time delivery, are now exposed to sudden disruptions. China's new rules require case-by-case -case export licenses for semiconductor-bound rare earths, leaving Dutch companies in limbo. The predictability their business model depends on has vanished overnight. Industry leaders and officials are scrambling for solutions, but there are no quick fixes. Building alternative supply chains takes years. The Dutch industry is caught in the crossfire of US-China rivalry. Retaliation for Dutch cooperation with US chip restrictions is clear. The world's leading chip industry is now paying the price. China's announcement triggered a global panic, with tech executives from Silicon Valley to Tokyo scrambling to map their supply chains. Nearly every modern device is linked to Chinese processed rare earths, a single point of failure. The once celebrated global supply chain now looks dangerously fragile. Companies are frantically securing whatever non-Chinese supply they can, driving up prices and leaving smaller firms behind. The fear isn't just a price spike, but a long-term shortage that could force product redesigns or shutdowns. The stability of global manufacturing is in question. Smartphones alone contain over 30 elements, many processed in China. Disruption means delays, higher prices and lost profits for tech giants. The crisis is forcing a painful re-evaluation of globalization's risks. The world is waking up to the reality that critical supply chains are now political battlegrounds. The US, EU, and Japan are racing to build independent rare earth supply chains free from Chinese control. These critical minerals are the backbone of modern technology powering everything from smartphones to electric vehicles and advanced military systems. As global demand soars, the stakes have never been higher. The US is pouring billions into domestic mining and processing, fast-tracking permits, and offering incentives to attract new players. Government agencies are partnering with private companies hoping to jumpstart a homegrown industry that can compete on the world stage. But new processing plants take 8 to 12 years to build, and expertise is scarce outside China. Even with funding the technical know-how and infrastructure needed to refine rare earths remain major obstacles. Japan, scarred by a 2010 export cutoff, has diversified supply, invested in Australia's Linus, and built strategic stockpiles. The country has learned from past vulnerabilities, forging new partnerships and securing alternative sources to protect its industries. Still, it remains dependent on China for heavy rare earths, which are essential for high-performance magnets and advanced electronics. Despite efforts to diversify, breaking free from China's grip is proving incredibly difficult. The EU's Critical Raw Materials Act aims to boost domestic sourcing but faces public opposition and skill shortages. Environmental concerns and local resistance have slowed progress, making it hard to scale up production quickly. The alliance is determined, but the path to independence is long and difficult. International cooperation is growing, yet the challenges are immense and require sustained commitment. Environmental and technical hurdles abound. Mining and processing rare earths can be dirty, expensive, and politically sensitive, adding layers of complexity to an already tough race. The world is in a race against time, and China holds all the cards. With its dominance over supply chains and processing capacity, China's influence shapes the entire global market. The urgency is real, but solutions are years away. For now, industries worldwide must navigate uncertainty hoping that new investments and innovation will eventually pay off. The global balance of power is shifting fast, and the outcome of this rare earth race will shape the future of technology, security, and economic leadership for decades to come. The rare earth crisis isn't just about profits, it's about how we live, innovate, and defend ourselves. A full-scale Chinese restriction could slash global GDP by up to 3% in a year. Your smartphone, laptop, and every digital device depend on these elements. Shortages mean higher prices, fewer new products, and slower innovation. Green energy is at risk. Wind turbines and EVs need rare earth magnets. Without supply, climate goals and clean tech investments are jeopardized. Defense systems are even more vulnerable. Fighter jets and submarines require tons of rare earths. A Chinese embargo could delay critical military procurement by years. This is no longer just an economic issue, it's a matter of national security. The stakes have never been higher. Can the world break free from China's rare earth grip? 
not quickly, and not easily. Building new processing plants costs billions and takes a decade. These are complex, hazardous operations requiring rare expertise. China could undercut new competitors by flooding the market at any time. Environmental concerns and public opposition make new projects hard to approve in the West. Cleaner technologies and public persuasion are needed to overcome resistance. The West also faces a shortage of skilled workers. China has decades of experience. Rebuilding that knowledge base will take years. Until then, new Western facilities will struggle to compete. China's rare earth restrictions signal a new era, one where the global economy is fracturing into rival blocks, each fiercely protecting its own interests. The world is no longer a single marketplace, but a battleground of economic power, where resources and technology are wielded as tools of influence and leverage. The age of seamless global trade is ending, replaced by strategic competition and weaponized supply chains. Every shipment, every deal, is now scrutinized for its geopolitical implications. Trust is eroding, and uncertainty is the new normal for businesses and governments alike. This split will make the world less efficient and more expensive for everyone. Production slows, costs rise, and the ripple effects are felt from the largest corporations to the smallest local shops. Economic pain is no longer confined to one region, it spreads globally. Companies must now build redundant supply chains, passing higher costs to consumers. The days of just-in-time delivery are fading, replaced by stockpiling and contingency planning. Shoppers everywhere are already noticing the impact at the checkout counter. Innovation will slow as collaboration gives way to suspicion and rivalry. Scientific partnerships are breaking down, and the free flow of ideas is being replaced by secrecy and protectionism. The race for technological supremacy is intensifying, but at a cost to progress. Nations and industries will be forced to choose sides. Neutrality is becoming impossible as alliances harden, and economic loyalties are tested. The choices made now will shape the global order for decades to come. The Dutch chip industry is a casualty, caught between superpowers. Once a symbol of global cooperation, it now faces pressure from all sides, forced to navigate a landscape where every decision has international consequences. The very idea of a global company may soon be obsolete. Multinationals are being forced to localize, split, or even abandon markets as barriers rise and trust evaporates. China is challenging the US-led economic order, making access to its resources a privilege, not a right. The world's dependence on Chinese materials is now a bargaining chip in a high-stakes game. The world stands at a crossroads, collaborate for resilience, or descend into a zero-sum contest. The decisions made today will determine whether we face a future of shared prosperity or deepening division. The tremors from China's move are still shaking the foundations of our world, leaving governments, businesses, and ordinary people to wonder what the next shockwave will bring.